Here I'm going to discuss my patient who is a 45 year old male, a software professional who presented to me with a history of bilateral shoulder pain and this shoulder pain was affecting his sleep for the past 3 to 4 weeks. He could not sleep because of the pain and upon further questioning he said that he was a headache patient and used to have headache for the past 15 to 20 years for which he has undergone some brain scans and nothing significant. I used to take pills whenever it's needed. Uh, for the past 6 to 7 months he was having some neck pain on and off again. He used to have morning stiffness uh, for the past 10 years he every day morning when he wakes up he will have 15 to 20 minutes of neck stiffness and then as the day progresses the stiffness goes away and then again next day morning the same stiffness comes since the stiffness is going away he thought that it's it's nothing serious and then he carried on his life like that one peculiar finding uh, which we got to know is that he used to clear his throat every three to four minutes something like <coughs> Like that, he used to clear his throat as if something is stuck in his throat, but which did not permanently go away. Apart from that, he used to have nigest pain, medial scapular pain, and uh, gastroesophageal reflux disease. Uh, he used to burp every now and then. Uh, he complains of uh, pain in the ear and ear block and occasionally he gets giddiness as well. When we did the range of motion checking, the neck flexion, extension, side flexion, rotation, they were all uh, marginally, marginally restricted uh, with the end range pain over the respective uh, areas of the muscles like trapezius, tenacromastoid, spinous and so on. Okay. He also has got his MRA done recently and uh, this is what the MRA looks like. This is a T2 rated uh, mid sagittal slice of his cervical spine. As you could see here uh, in multi-level the disc is degenerated. Uh, I mean you see there is no um, much of nucleus pulposus left you see here the disc is kind of degenerated degenerated and uh, here it's not so much de degenerated but you could see there is a posterior disc uh, uh, herniation in the first two to three levels this is C2 C3 and uh, C3 C4 these two levels there's a significant uh, congestion happening in the post uh, spinal canal and uh, apart from that you could see a mild disc bulge over here and mild disc bulge over here so this is a classic uh, cervical spinal canal uh, stenosis which is uh, due to the primary uh, disc herniation in multiple levels which is kind of congesting the entire spinal cord in the upper cervical segment and uh, as i already mentioned that the spinal cord to remain healthy it should be like this it should be suspended freely by the cerebrospinal fluid from along the entire circumference of the spinal cord but as you could see here uh, this is definitely uh, not good and you don't need any other reason for this patient to develop uh, headache and uh, ear block and ear pain and um, uh, nauseating sensation or even gastro and, and even gastroesophageal reflux disease because all the sympathetic nerves from the uh, cervical segment are the one which goes to the esophageal sphincter and this can also cause uh, cervical related headaches because the trigeminal nerve sensory component starts from C1, C2, C3 level here which can cause uh, cervical related headaches uh, like this. This is the same reason why people can also feel ear blocks, nausea, vomiting as well as like uh, brain fog or even uh, um, dizziness or, or blurry vision. So most of my patients who are having chronic cervical spine problem or even people who are having uh, chronic cervical disc issues uh, would have such kind of symptoms. So it's not only neck pain, it's also uh, uh, other symptoms which is clustering along with the neck pain. Apart from that, if what you could see here is the osteophytic changes. So these osteophytic changes are anterior in, in locality and probably this is trachea okay this could possibly explain why the patient had to clear his throat every now and then because this spur especially when the neck is in forward bend position this spur may cause slight irritation in the trachea and that is making him to clear his throat every now and then in the year 2014 he has done an mri uh, because he used to get occasional neck pains and he met a doctor and that doctor recommended for MRI and, and the MRI finding looks like this which was taken in the year 2014. Uh, if you see this MRI, uh, you could see there is no major uh, disc bulges except for mild uh, disc bulge in the level C3, C4 and um, C4, C5. Apart from that, you see the integrity of the spinal cord is maintained. The cerebrospinal fluid is, is suspending the spinal cord very well. You could actually see the continuity, continuity of the cerebrospinal fluid both anteriorly and posteriorly. That means the spinal cord is still not uh, fully congested or narrowed against this image where the spinal cord is fully congested and narrowed. Now, this patient had similar symptoms earlier also uh, for which he was just medicated. They told that it's a normal neck pain. Everybody has disc bulges. So this is normal. Take some painkillers, be active, do regular exercises. And this is a common uh, treatment that every doctor will give. And little bit of painkillers, little bit of uh, anti-inflammatory, little bit of calcium tablet, vitamin tablets. 
So the treatment was given in a general sense. Okay, then nobody told, nobody addressed why the disc is degenerated like this, why there's a mild urination here, why the patient is having the symptoms. Since from the year 2014 to 2020, the MRI became like this. You see here now there is no turning back because the spinal cord is really really congested. You know the disc is more herniated and the patient has got multiple multiple symptoms now. So remember it's not only pain. He has got so many other symptoms which he could not explain why. Uh, he is seriously suffering with these symptoms and he could not even get an answer from any doctor why he is having such kind of issues. Okay because nobody addresses the spinal canal here. If only he has got a right intervention in the year 2014 probably it may not have become like this in this manner okay same comparison 2014 2020 uh, you see the comparison here uh, what you are seeing is the uh, axial view uh, of the cervical spine this patient has undergone a nerve conduction study as well and the study results showed that he was having a median bilateral motor sensory demyelinating neuropathy now neuropathy is means what this is other nerve system now conduction study will show whether there is a conduction problem in the nerve or not. It does not show why there is a conduction problem. In this case the conduction problem is because the nerves are being impinged by the bulging disc. So the culprit is the bulging disc and the victim is the nerve. So people who are taking medicines for the nerve growth, nerve tonics or some medicines like pregabalin or gabapentin, uh, they are just going to slow down the conduction further. Uh, that means the patient may have some sort of pain relief because the, the nerve conduction velocity may get further reduced so that the pain relief can happen but that is not the right treatment okay the right treatment is to any attempt that should be made to reduce the compression of the nerve by the bulging disc so it's very complicating the management is not that simple so we had to weigh so many pros and cons and then we decided okay we will start the conservative management because based on the face value of the MRI this patient definitely needed a surgery but uh, given that uh, the age of the patient we thought probably we will just start our conservative management we started unloading the neck means we told him that every now and then he has to lie down uh, avoid prolonged sitting in, in front of the computer uh, we gave some curve correction exercise because there's a mild loss of cervical lordosis as well uh, so we gave him some curve correction exercise and uh, we told him to wear a soft cervical color at least 50 to 60 percent of the entire day and uh, we educated about ergonomics and how to use the phone how to use the laptop how to use pillows when he is sleeping and uh, apart Apart from that, we told uh, to avoid provocative movements like vigorous shaking, coughing, sneezing, uh, which may further provocate the uh, given problem. We had him consulted our neurologist and just gave him uh, some uh, strong pain medications in order to mitigate the pain so that the excess can have some time to take effect. So uh, it's not simple again. We tried our best. This, so far, the patient is doing okay. The night pain has subsided and then uh, is uh, reasonably painless most of the time. He's still using the collar. The other symptoms like the throat clearance is still there. So far the headache is not happened and the ear block and the ear symptoms have, have reasonably reduced. So that's the line of management that you have given. So in summary, all chronic neck pain patients are the back pain patients where once a patient of acute pain. And, this, and in these acute episodes, uh, the patients were not treated correctly. Slowly they become a chronic pain patients. So the chronic pain could have been prevented if it was managed correctly during the acute stage. Uh, hardly any identifies the structural reason for a pain or the pain or the pain generator because most of the doctors, uh, they give general treatment, uh, symptomatic treatment without addressing the root of the problem. In some patients, the damage is so severe that uh, it is completely irreversible in terms of the pathology. Even a best physio or a best surgeon cannot fix them permanently. So this is an example of how a patient of uh, simple neck pain, as the neck pain attacks repeats and repeats and repeats, as it becomes more and more progressive in nature, it can go to a stage where it can cause headache and ear pain and, and nausea and then gastric problem as well as pain radiating down to the arms and hands, Okay, which can be easily prevented if these patients were addressed uh, rightly in the earlier stages. I hope it was little insightful for you. Use this principle of management to your patients and try to prevent the chronic neck pains and the back pains. Thank you.